We are here at the Rhinebeck High School for the Thriving in Rhinebeck event and speaking to Joe Phelan and Myna Lynch and Colleen Crookshank. Colleen, could you tell us about your activities in organizing this event? Uh, well, this is our second year and a group of us uh, would meet annually and talk about uh, the senior services available in our area and nobody seemed to know what the other one was doing so we decided to bring everybody together uh, make an event out of it so this is our second year here thank you and Nina could you elaborate well we, um, as Colleen said we all came together I knew a lot of providers of services from my past life and the office for aging so we put all our heads together and our wonderful third person here offered us some magnificent space. Yeah, our contribution, even though uh, services for seniors isn't really part of our mission as a school district, part of our mission is to serve the community. So this is an opportunity for us to serve a larger segment of our community beyond our, our students in grades K through 12. And we also have probably the, the, the biggest facility here in order to be able to host uh, seniors from the community as well as this many vendors with classrooms and an auditorium. So we, we had the facility that I think met the needs of the planning committee last year and it's really our, our, our deep privilege to be able to be part of this and a, a sponsor by providing our facility to, to this event. And I'd like to add how helpful your students were in helping people unload this morning, and they were very pleasant that, and very helpful. Thank you. That, that's a great part of the synergy of this event, is to bring kids and seniors and other members of our community, our service providers, together in one place for for really great purpose. Well, thank you all so much and for hosting this event here today. Thank you're, you. You're, you're welcome. Thanks. We are here with Jan Scriber and, and June Vanderlaan. And you are representing Wilderstein. We're both volunteers here. And, and what do you do there at Wilderstein? Basically, we do whatever we can. Uh, we both are docents at Wilderstein. Uh, we give tours. Uh, we help uh, with all the events that we have at Wilderstein. Uh, and uh, we are here representing Wilderstein today. I've been on the board for some time. And uh, so I've acted in that capacity as well. Uh, but go ahead. So besides being a docent, I also um, work on landscape, volunteer with landscape. We can always use helpers in the landscape. And uh, also when they have mailings, I go and help with mailings, addressing envelopes and stuffing them and um, getting them out to the, to the public. And so today we're taking the... Uh, uh, people's names and addresses to get on our mailing list so that they can get our information about the happenings and things going on. And right now we're pushing our um, holiday tours, which uh, begin on, on Thanksgiving weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 1 to 4, and every Saturday and Sunday all of December. Uh, not on Christmas Day, but we will be open the two days after, the 26th and 27th. And we will be having our, our annual holiday tea on December 10th, um, which includes not only uh, a wonderful assortment of sandwiches and desserts, uh, but a tour of the home, uh, which is decorated for Christmas by some of our local florists and some of our volunteers. So we welcome everybody during the holiday season. It's a special time at Wilderstein. And if we're not here to sign up and we want to volunteer, we should go on the computer and we have a website. We have a website, uh, wilderstein.org. Uh, and uh, you can always call our office, which is 876-4818.
Now, just in case there is someone out there in the Northern Duchess area who does not know whose home Wilderstein was, would you explain for our viewers? Certainly. Okay, Wilderstein uh, was the home of the Sookley family beginning in 1852 and uh, continuing until the last member of the family, Margaret Lynch Sookley, who we referred to as Daisy, passed away in 1991. And since 1991, uh, the volunteers at Wilderstein have been actively engaged in restoring the mansion and making sure that it's open to the public. You've done a great job. Love that oh, place. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for participating in today's event. Glad to do that. Okay, I'm going to say now... And who am I talking to? Good morning, this is Brent Stewart-Loth. I'm with FlexYourMemory.com. And uh, how do you help people with their memory? Um, I help people of all ages actually strengthen their mental agility, maximize their brain fitness. People often think about diet and exercise and rest as part of overall health, but they don't think about the elasticity of their brain as much. And in an age of over-reliance on digital technology, we tend to outsource a lot of our memory to our devices and not do as much internally. So I, I say we should do for our brains what we do for our bodies, exercise it, remember more, and it helps our engagement with each other and with the material that we need to learn. And uh, how do people access your services? They can go to my website, flexyourmemory.com. They can find lots of resources, including my book that specializes in how to remember people's names. Um, I also do interviews with Broadway actors about their technique for memorizing their, their scripts. Musical theater, Shakespeare, Stopper, Beckett, all kinds of uh, some very difficult, complex material. They talk about how they approach it and engage with it. And everyday citizens can learn how to use that too and improve their memory. So they can learn from the actors for the interviews. Uh, what else do I have on there? Uh, resources, uh, extensive bibliography of books on our interaction with computers, uh, brain fitness in general, and even fiction works about um, how the mind works. And repeat for us, please, your name and your website. Sure, Brent Swordloff at FlexYourMemory.com. Great, thanks for speaking with us. Sure, thank you, Kathy. Am I rolling? I feel a bit stuck. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hi. Get out there. Hi. Okay, I'm Brett Sunflower, Natural Foods in Rhinebeck. You can find us right on Garden Street. Um, I run the vitamin department over there. And, uh, we're really happy to be here today. Uh, we love our seniors. We offer a senior discount every day. And, uh, yeah, thank you for having us and supporting us. Now, besides the senior discount, I understand you offer also offer a member's discount. We do offer member spe special member pricing. Um, in addition to the senior discount, um, so that's a lot of fun for people. Um, yeah, and we like supporting our community because you guys support us. And besides vitamins, I, I understand you have a cafe. We do have a cafe with the juice bar, smoothies, fresh food. Um, we have it uh, ready to eat so you can grab and go or you can order and eat. Um, we've got a nice little setup inside and outside during the summer months. Um, yeah, we also have a great produce section. Uh, we've got a great meat and cheese cooler. We try to be a one-stop shop for everybody. Is it all organic, your produce? All of our produce is organic, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Bye. And I am talking to Colleen Malford. Colleen, glad to meet you. And you are with Next Step Home. T tell me about Next Step Home. Uh, we're professional organizers. Um, we specialize in move management and helping seniors when they need to downsize. Um, or we can also help seniors when they want to stay in their own home, but they need to reorganize the home, make it work better for them today than it did 30 years ago. Uh huh. Um, we uh, do a lot of small things. Uh, we have a Christmas special going right now, where we're helping people, seniors especially, who just don't have the um, strength to put up Christmas decorations anymore. We'll come in for two hours and put up your Christmas tree and decorate, and then we'll come back again after Christmas and take it all down and put it away. 
um, some people don't have the time to go Christmas shopping or the energy, and so we'll go out and get it for them. We'll wrap everything and put it under the tree. Um, Christmas cards, it depends on whatever anybody's needs are. We are, uh, three of us are professional organizers, and uh, we're, we enjoy what we do. We like it. Colleen, how long have you been in business? I've been in business only three years, but I have 25 years of uh, social work experience, so I bring the skill set from that to the um, Hudson, you know, to this project. Wonderful. I love it. Okay, and if we want to find you, give us a telephone number. or 594 5913. Got it. Thanks Thank for you. sharing. See, that wasn't so hard. I do him. Okay, and I am talking to your name? Gay, Gay Galitsen. I'm on the board of the Circle of Friends for the Dying. And um, tell me about the organization. Well, the organization started about three or four years ago in Kingston, in Ulster County, and it was inspired by. The, the idea that uh, there are about 25 of these homes that we want to start in, in Kingston. There are already 25 of them further upstate. And it's a place where people who can no longer stay in their own home when they've had a terminal diagnosis of three months or less, and very often they can't stay in their own home because there's no one to look after them. And when hospice is called in, they have to evaluate how safe they are. And if there's no one there to look after them 24 hours a day, hospice will try and find someone, or eventually they may have to put this person into a nursing home. And these homes, like the one that we've bought here in Kingston, will become an alternative to a nursing home. It's a place where somebody can go, and it becomes like their own home. It's a place where their family and friends can come anytime, they can stay overnight if they need to. They can cook meals, they can have family parties, the children can play in the garden. And these people will have their own their own room and access to the outside through a, a, a deck. And uh, it costs nothing, because this is a neighborhood-based, community-based venture. Hospice will look after their medical needs, but volunteers from the neighborhood, people like you and everybody watching this, can, can offer their time either to come and help look after someone um, an, an hour or two a week if they want, or they can mow the grass, or they can um, do the washing. It's, it's an idea that brings people in touch with those who are dying. We, we tend, we have, for the last 50 or 60 years, we've pushed the, de uh, the ill and the dying and the elderly out of our line of sight. They go into closed communities, into nursing homes, and so we become very scared of dying. And one of the things that a circle of friends wants to do is to increase the conversation around dying and death so that people have a chance to prepare for their own dying and death and don't die anxious and with so many things unsaid that they have a, a chance to talk to people and to talk to their families about what they want. One of the things that we're doing, apart from opening this home, once we've uh, raised $300,000 for the renovations necessary, one of the things we've been doing for several years, four years now, is a death cafe. A death cafe is a place where people can come and talk about all those issues surrounding dying, being ill, and, and death, without somebody saying, oh, I don't want to talk about that, oh, no, can't talk about that. This is a place where you can sit with three or four other people over coffee and cake and just talk about it. And talk about maybe a friend of yours has got a, a, a difficult uh, diagnosis or your family or your children won't let you talk about what you want to talk about in terms of what you want for your death. And it's a place that it has no agenda. You simply come, you talk, and then you say goodbye and you leave. So that, those are the things that we want to do. We want to provide competent, caring uh, care for our people who are at the end of life, and we want to increase the conversation around dying and death. And we're doing it now in Ulster. We are also talking to people in Dutchess County about a future house here. We would be very interested in having a house in Dutchess County. Is the house in Kingston the only such house? It's the only house 
that we're involved in, uh -huh. but as I said, there are 25 of these houses, some of them have been going over 25 years. In this area? No, in upstate New York. It started okay. in, Ro in Rochester, the t city of Rochester has seven of these houses in, in different neighborhoods, and they're totally supported by the local neighborhood. And that's the idea. This is a neighborhood, a community. Your friends and neighbors are part of this. Thank you so much for your information. Okay, I'm delighted to tell you. We're going to have to do some editing. <laughs> you did great. to the people at Hope, helping other people everywhere, and uh, tell us your name and how your organization does help okay. other people everywhere. My name is Samantha uh, Robinson, and what we do is come into the homes and we um, help the seniors with anything they need, non-medical of course. We um, help them with laundry, ADLs, um, take them to appointments if they need appointments, uh, do errands for them, um, companionship, basically anything they need. So that's what we do. And we cover the whole Hudson Valley area. Where is your home base? Home base is in Dutchess County, which is in Beacon. In Beacon? Yes. Okay, but you come up to Rhinebeck? Yes, we do. We come up to Rhinebeck, uh, we do Putnam County, uh, Orange County, Westchester. Basically everywhere. And in your experience, um, how, what kind of a time period do you help people over? Well, we require a minimum of four hours. Uh huh. Um, and how long they need us? Um, they could put their days. Um, if they need a live-in, like somebody to stay there 24 hours, we also do that. Uh huh. Yes. So you have a fee schedule for different services? Yes, ma'am. We do. Okay, great. And uh, give us the telephone number where people can reach us. <laughs> we're here at the table for Rhinebeck at Home, and we're speaking with Ellen Hubbard. Hi, Ellen. Hi. Tell, tell us something about Rhinebeck at Home. Rhinebeck at Home is about four years old, and we are fully volunteer organization. We try to keep people uh, in Rhinebeck connected to the community and we also are helpful. If you need to ha have a ride to physical therapy we can take you. If you've been ill and in the hospital we take meals to you. We have a walking group, we have a lunch group of people who like to go to movies. In the afternoon, we have all kinds of things. And we have a once a month meeting that everyone is welcome to come to. And um, if you want to get our uh, address or website, you can have one of these. And um, we have uh, about 110 members. And um, it's really wonderful. Younger people than I have joined because they want this organization to be around when they get to be my age. <laughs> and I bet if we uh, searched Thriving Rhinebeck at Home, rather, Rhinebeck yes. at Home Rhinebeck. on the uh, computer, yes. it would come up with your website. Yes. And uh, it's really quite an amazing thing. And Nina Lynch is the one who started it all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have I have no use for ironing, you know. To my mind it's all organic. Wrinkles are fine. <laughs> well I was yeah, coming to Rhinebeck yeah, well, we so, yeah. from East Fishko. I mean I thought, let me try to be wrinkle free. <laughs> but that didn't work out too well. So we are here talking with Susan Davidson. And you are with Friends of Seniors of Dutchess County. Okay, please tell us something about the Friends of Seniors. Well, Friends of Seniors has been around 12 years now. We provide a basic support system to the older adult community in Dutchess County. 
we provide non-emergency medical transportation, doctors, physical therapy, same-day surgery, labs. We also provide grocery shopping for people who have no other means to get food. We either take senior shopping with us or we shop for them. We have visiting services, respite for primary caregivers, and uh, telephone reassurance. Those, and it's all volunteer based and more importantly, all of our services are free. Fabulous. If we want to get in touch with you, how do we find you? 845-485-1277. Well, thank you so much and thank you for your good work. And thank you. All right. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I'm a professional organizer and I work with families to declutter so you can safely age in place or start the process of downsizing and moving to a smaller, more comfortable space. So I'm here to help, soup to nuts. I always offer complimentary consultations over a cup of tea. And I'd love to speak with you if you think you might need services to declutter, be safe, be happy. Now, uh, could you tell us your name again and, your, and the name of your organization? Absolutely. My name is Colleen Ash, and I'm owner and founder of Ash Organizing Solutions. I'm based in the town of Poughkeepsie, but I serve all of the Mid-Hudson Valley. I absolutely love what I do. I'm one of those individuals that can say they were born organized. So, thank you. It's, it's uh, so wonderful. I, I do appreciate the whole concept of uh, downsizing your stuff and making life more manageable. I'm That's take right. Of pictures of, Absolutely. Uh, I always say start small. Start with your junk drawer. So we all have at least one or two of these. This is the junk drawer before and then here it is a junk drawer after. With a simple time some uh, simple tools you too can declutter your junk drawer, start small, sometimes just getting started is the hardest part. Approximately how long does it uh, take you uh, months or however to achieve your desired goal with the, your clients? It really depends. Some clients I'm in and out in just a couple of sessions. Other clients I've worked with for years. It really depends on the client, their goals, and the project scope. Okay. I'm going to swirl over to your telephone number so people might uh, be able to give you a call. Well, thank you very much. That's 845-242-2845. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Hi. you. Hi, I am speaking to Dottie Distal. Hi, Dottie. And you are with? Right now. I'm with the Office for Aging Matter of Balance <laughs> like program. This. My son said uh -huh. my official was born. Tell me about that program. Well, the Matter of Balance program is an eight week long course that was designed for seniors who have okay. fears and concerns about falling. And it's really a nice, it's a small, uh, usually about 12 to 14 people are involved in a class where there's an exercise component to it, there's a health education component, there's a cognitive restructuring piece to help people become more willing to advocate for themselves, um, and there's a home safety and community safety program where there's problem solving, um, and it's really designed to help people take a look at and be proactive in preventing falls. And when do you offer these programs? Most of the programs are in the spring and in the fall. They're throughout the county. Um, there are classes that are being organized through the Office for the Aging. And if someone wants a brochure or information, they should contact the Office for the Aging for an application. It's a free program. There's a donation that's suggested but not necessary. Snacks are included. Uh, it's a nice social opportunity for networking. Um, it's a rewarding experience. 
And you are an instructor. I'm one of the coaches. All the coaches um, are well trained and we enjoy what we do. Well, we appreciate what you do. And it seems to me you can use the uh, increased ability and agility and balance at any age. I've learned a lot myself. It's Thank fun. You. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And you are? I'm Sharon DiCarlo. I'm from Hudson Valley Hospice. Tell us about hospice services. So we are the local nonprofit hospice that covers Dutchess and Ulster counties. Um, we provide care and support to patients and families who are have, facing serious illnesses. Um, we like to refer to it as life-limiting illnesses. Um, everything from Cancer, that many people think about cancer for hospice, it's kind of a natural, but we also cover heart end-stage heart disease. Um, we have special programs for end-stage respiratory illnesses, and we really help people to enhance the quality of their life for the time that they have. So a lot of people think about hospice for times when um, thinking they're not going to receive any more treatment, but I would like to say that um, if you look into our, our specialized programs, people are getting treatment for respiratory illness, for heart disease, and for many, many different diseases that are progressive illnesses, um, and we're basically helping them stay home, stay comfortable, symptom-free, um, and not have to go rushing off to the hospital in a crisis. So um, that's really our goal, is to keep people safe at home um, and, um, and, and free from pain and allow them to live with comfort and dignity. Are you telling me that you don't have to have a diagnosis of imminent death well, to engage hospice you services? Have, you do have to have a diagnosis from a doctor. Um, when you say imminent death, I'm thinking six I, months. Six months is the Medicare criteria. We have patients on our program, so when a doctor would not be surprised, I wanted to actually show you this little section right here. Ask me why you should call sooner. So while the doctor's Medicare certification says they would not be surprised if a patient died within six months, it doesn't mean that you are going to come on hospice and that you have to die in six months. We have patients that sometimes are on our program for much longer than that. Um, the unfortunate thing is we often have patients who come on because they have imminent, they're, they're going to die imminently. Um, and that, when, when I say die imminently, a lot of times people come on the program way too late and they're only on the program for a, a week or two. Um, and, and unfortunately, we can't give them all of the help and support that we can during that short time frame. So I try to encourage people to look into our services sooner rather than later. Um, and we'll worry about whether or not, you know, we'll work with the doctor and worry about whether or not they're eligible for hospice care. Tell us your name again. It's Sharon DiCarlo. And how can people get in touch with you? Um, you can get in touch with Hudson Valley Hospice. Um, you can visit our website at um, hvhospice.org or you can call us at 485-2273. Um, and that will connect both to, uh, we can transfer to our Kingston office as well. We have a satellite office in Kingston. That's our main number. I know you do wonderful work, and thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we are here with Elizabeth Spira, and I am CEO for Community Action Partnership for Dutchess County. And we are a not for profit serving low income families, helping them to become more self sufficient. Under our umbrella is the RSVP program, and that helps connect seniors and volunteers with opportunities throughout the county uh, to do their volunteerism. We also have Dress for Success, which will help women who are going out into the workforce with appropriate business clothing. Uh, we also are part of the Cash Coalition that um, helps low to moderate income families get free income tax preparation. Uh, weatherization program will help homeowners uh, become weatherized and save up to a third of their energy costs. It's also income eligibility. Um, so there's what we do. 
What don't you do? Um, we haven't found it yet, but if it fits our mission and will help the families of our community, we're, we would be happy to try to do it. Well, I appreciate your information, and could you explain what communities you serve? We serve the entire Dutchess County community. We have four locations throughout the county. One is in Red Hook on Market Street, uh, Beacon, Dover Plains, and Poughkeepsie. Whereabouts on Market Street in Red Hook? It's headed east on 199, about two blocks off of the center, Light. Uh huh. So we're open there Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and all of our programs are available there as every other location in the county. Can you give us a telephone number in okay. uh, Red Hook? The Red Hook is 876-1611, and it's, the number is 4446 East Market Street. Now, if you'd be so kind to tell us a little bit more about the RSVP program. The Retired Senior and Volunteer Program helps connect seniors looking for volunteer opportunities and connect them with stations, we call them stations throughout the county, that are looking for volunteers. We find it's important to connect the volunteer and what he wants to do or he or she wants to do with an opportunity that suits both. So there's several locations throughout the county that are always looking for volunteers. Uh, some are the meal delivery programs, uh, the, the, um, the hospital in Rhinebeck needs some help. So all of these sites that rely on volunteers for part of their work are always looking for volunteers. How long have you been affiliated with the I've been with Community Action for 16 years. Uh -huh. I've been in my current position for six years. So, um, yeah, I've been here a while and I enjoy the work I do. It's rewarding to help in whatever way you can with the, all of your residents of your county. We appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are here at the League of Women Voters of the Mid-Hudson Regions table. And we have first Ann Needham. And I'm the Vice President of the uh, Mid-Hudson League of Women Voters. Um, we are here to talk about materials management. Uh, also, we're here to talk about please vote. It's time. Almost. Okay. By the time our viewers in the Northern Duchess area have seen this video, the suspense will it's have over. been over. We don't know. Okay. But we will continue our attention to materials management and uh, reducing our impact on the planet. And we encourage anybody who might want to get in touch with us and meet with us once a month at uh, a restaurant across the river, uh, you'd be mo more than welcome. Please go on our website, which is lwvmidhudson.org, where you'll see a newsletter or other information about our materials management study group and voter information. And we have this little brochure which tells you all about our local league. And it's kind of important because we do work locally in Dutchess and in Ulster counties. Danielle Maloney. I'm with Panda 23, your public access station. Um, if you're a Time Warner subscriber, you can always tune in to us on Channel 23 or you can visit our website to catch all your local board meetings and any other events that we may have taped, programming. Check it all out on our website at www.pandatv23.org. That's great. And you know we all love your uh, programming. How can uh, the viewers um, develop own, their own program to send in to you, Danielle? Oh, well, they should definitely contact me um, at Station MGR, like Mary George Robert, at pandatv23.org, and I can go through the full 
um, process with them. We offer the loan of equipment. Um, we have computers and editing programs that will help you learn um, so you can edit your own programming. If you're capable of doing these things on your own, you just have to go to our website and fill out one of our forms and send it or drop it by the office at 6 Montgomery Street in Tivoli. The address may be changing in the future, so, so definitely contact me first. Um, other than that, I think um, I think just contact me and we can talk about everything. I want to tell you how much we appreciate your services. Thank you. Alrighty.